guys, let's continue our topic about the vena cava superior system. And so let's take a look at the veins of the neck. Yeah? The main vein of the neck is the vena jugularis interna. And so the vena jugularis interna, so I'm showing you right now, is the blood vessel that will receive intracranial, um, so tributaries. So it will drain everything inside of our skull and also the bones of our skull yeah, and the brain itself. And also with the extracranial um, tributaries, it will drain also the soft tissues outside of the skull. Yeah, So this is the very important blood vessel. And uh, the second vein, yeah, you can see the vena jugularis externa is much smaller. So this one receives the um, so predominantly uh, superficial branches, superficial tributaries. Yeah? And the vena jugularis anterior is the most superficial jugular vein. So let's take a look at the vena jugularis externa where it forms. So we can see here that vena jugularis externa, which is located here, is formed by two roots. So the anterior root belong to the vena retramandibularis and the posterior root belong to the vena auricularis posterior. So they do fuse, they unite at the level of the angulus mandibula. And so then you can see yeah, that uh, the start point also localizes at the upper margin of the musculus sternocleidomastoideus. And then you can see that the vein crosses the muscle reaches the uh, so the posterior margin of it and then also we can see that the vein uh, will go under the um, so the platysma and then it reaches approximately the level of the um, so the clavicle bone and then it disappears so what does happen here so the vein will pierce the lamina superficialis fascia coli so it goes deeper and then we can see how does it curves and opens into the angulus venosus uguli and so this angulus venosus uguli is a, uh, so as you can see on the schematic picture here, is a place between the fusion of the vena jugularis interna and the vena subclavia. So here forms a very sharp angle where will flow the vena jugularis externa. So this vein is also vena jugularis externa. And so uh, the vein yeah, could flow into this angle, which uh, happens more usually, but also the vein could flow into the nearest vein like the vena jugularis interna and very rarely to the vena subclavia. Uh, what else do we need to know about this angulus venosus uguli? So not only the external jugular vein flows into it, but also the, uh, so on the right side, ductus lymphaticus dexter and also the ductus thoracicus flows uh, into this uh, place. Yeah. Okay, and so about the tributaries of the vena jugularis externa, so this vein is superficial and it will uh, so receive the uh, superficial tributaries, yeah, but uh, the uh, so vena transversa coli, so the mm, so main tributaries uh, will drain the superficial muscles of the uh, back, but also the deep muscles of the neck. And so remember, we will have the same name artery. So these veins will uh, accompany this artery. Then the same happens with the vena suprascapularis, yeah. So this vein also accompany the artery and also drain the muscles of the scapular region. And the last vein is the vena jugularis anterior. So what about this vein? Yeah? So it starts approximately at the level of the uh, osteoideum from the plexus, venous plexus under the chin. Yeah, And so we can see that this vein on the right and on the left side will go pretty straight downward Yeah, along the muscular recticoli, along the straight muscles of the neck next to the one or even two centimeters next to the uh, midline of the neck and so we can see how does this vein yeah, uh, goes towards the uh, incisura jugularis sterni and so here inside of the incisura yeah, so it pierces the lamina superficialis fascia cervicalis and so then it appears inside of the spatium, inside of the uh, spatium suprasternale and so here we can see that on the right side and on the left side both veins will make the anastomotic arch and also the same happens here yeah we can see um, so the right and the left jugular vein and so they will make the anastomotic arch arcus venosus uguli but the vein on the right and on the left side then changes its direction and you can see so it goes more laterally to cross the vena jugularis interna to flow into the vena jugularis externa but also sometimes this vein do not flow into 
into the uh, external jugular vein but into the subclavian or into the vena brachiocephalica so on the right side and the same will happen with the left side sometimes we don't have even the vena jugularis anterior and we will have only one vein vena mediana colia so that is made by fusion of this uh, veins of the plexus under the osteoideum and the uh, or just start point of the jugular vein and so then this vein yeah will flow into one of the uh, vena jugularis externa okay so let's take a look at the vena jugularis interna the vena jugularis interna so uh, starts at the level of the foramen jugular and so we can see here that uh, so it is the direct continuation of the sinusigmoideus yeah so it just continues into the vein and we can see that the upper part of the vein is enlarged and so this is called bulbus superior vena jugularis yeah and so also uh, the vein uh, predominantly occupies uh, the posterior part of the foramen jugular and then descend downward yeah and so uh, it uh, for the very beginning localizes behind the arteria carotis interna then you can see that the vein tend to um, so to go more laterally and so when we are looking at the uh, so the vagina carotica so this bunch of blood vessel and nerves we can see that the vein uh, is located more laterally from the arteria carotis communis so this is very important moment because uh, when we want to make the puncture yeah of the vena jugularis interna so we need to punctate the vein not the artery yeah so and we we need to know that the vein yeah is more laterally located okay so what about the mm, vena jugularis interna then so we can see that it distend and so uh, it will terminate as the, the another enlargement so the bulbus inferior vena jugularis and then it will just connect with the vena subclavia to form the vena brachia so dextra and the same happens on the left side sinistra yeah and uh, so uh, what else do we need to know that the vena jugularis interna so like i uh, also um, mentioned before so it will receive the intracranial tributaries so basically all venous sinuses the veins of our brain veins of our um, so the vena diploids uh, veins of our skull and also of thalamic and labyrinthal veins they will flow into the vena jugularis uh, uh, interna and the extracranial tributaries are um, so basically accompany the same name artery so if you know the pathway of the artery you will definitely do not have problems with the veins except the uh, specific vein vena retromandibularis that we will uh, take a look at um, the different uh, lecture and so why do we need to know about this uh, veins vena jugularis interna and externa so uh, we can use them yeah for the catheterization yeah so and if you want for example to make the um, so to uh, form the central venous line yeah so we can uh, we can catheterize the vena jugularis interna so we need to find the triangle between the heads of the musculosternocleidomastoideus yeah and the clavicle bone we will uh, press here to find the pulse of the vena uh, of the arteria carotis communis and when we found it so then we know that it localizes more laterally and so uh, then we see the top of the triangle so it will be the place uh, yeah where we will put the needle okay and so um, I think that this is it yeah and uh, um, thank you for your attention and see you